and shake your booties for black girl nerds. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caitlin. I'm Giandra from Black Girl Nerds. It's such a pleasure to speak with you today. Hi, Giandra. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. Very excited to talk to you. I just loved, I just loved your portrayal of Betsy in this so much. It was so, it was so heart-wrenching and so moving. And you kept rooting and rooting, but when addiction takes root, there, there's nothing you can really do from the outside except be sub, sub, um, supportive. Yeah. What was particularly heartbreaking was just the physical transformation that we watched Betsy go through. As you dived into what that would look like on a screen, obviously the lines are important as well, but how did you tackle those nuances of Betsy? It's, uh, thank you for saying all of that. I, I really appreciate it. I, it's such a, it's such a hard r role to tackle. Um, it's something that I really wanted to, I wanted to tackle though. I really wanted to tell this story because I think it's a, a story that um, is often sugarcoated or on the other side of it is often uh from films I've seen in the past, like addiction can be like romanticized in a way. And I, I think that this was the perfect opportunity, this story to be able to really show what was actually going on at the beginning of this crisis and how it started with the Purdue Pharma and Sackler family side of it. And then um, also getting a, a glimpse of what um, the victims of it of, and victims of the crisis we're going through. And Betsy is a character that represents a lot of people. So I felt an immense amount of pressure to do it right. And um, I think just, you know, I, I did a lot of, I did a lot of research. Um, I talk, I was talking with someone on set a lot who had, um, similar experiences and um all of that was this was super helpful but also paying attention to you know her story and what it is on on page and um you know she is a type of person that internalizes a lot and has internalized a lot for a very long time um so i i just I really just wanted to, to, it's a lot, it's a lot of nuance, not nuances to like tackle. And it's a, it's a lot to take on, but um, I, I felt like I had, I had a, I had a, a, a responsibility to, to do it right. And to take it really seriously. I feel like looking at some of your other roles, you really excel in kind of these all encompassing roles that are, um, really emotionally gut-wrenching, like uh, other characters you've portrayed in the past have been in, in, sim in similar things. Where do you say addiction on the scale of actions you have to convey versus hurt or pain, so are, are those other things, where on the scale of difficulty is it to, to bring that to life compared to other things you've done? I think... Um... Gosh, I think, well, the only other thing I can really, like when I did Unbelievable, I felt like that was was not only like, obviously an, an acting job and, you know, a project that I was a part of, but it was also so much more than that for me. Um, it felt so much bigger than me. And this is another one of those kinds of projects that this, this, it, it, her story and, and, and the need to tell it right was so much bigger than me. Um, and so I can't even really rate the difficulty level because I really, I, I, I really took myself out of, out of the equation when I was playing it. And I, especially when like, action gets called and I have to do these just really, really super, like the more intense scenes, I guess I should say in the show. I just really, I just took, 
completely removed myself from it and how I felt. And I had such a, a I had a duty to serve the, the material and serve the story and, and serve the emotion in a right way that if I were even thinking about like the, how hard it was or how difficult it was, I think it would, I, I think it would, it, it would just wouldn't be helpful. And it, it's not, it, it, that that's not the point of what we were doing this for. We weren't, you know, making this show to be like, oh, that was, that was so hard for us. No, we would, you know, we wanted to make this for the audience so that people can really understand what the victims were going through and, and so much more and have empathy towards it. So I can't even really, I don't think I can really give it a, I don't think I can even rate it because what I was going through, even if a day I had was really super hard, it's nothing in comparison to what someone is with um, going through this um, felt, you know, or feels it's um, yeah, it was hard. I can say that it was definitely hard, um, but I, I, I felt like it had, it, it had to be in order to, to do it right. Well, you are brilliant. I truly enjoyed you. You're immensely talented and this show is terrific. Thank you for your time and talking to me and I hope others enjoyed it as much as I did. Well done, thank you. Thank you so much, Jandra, I really appreciate it. Hello, Will, thank you so much. I was so intrigued by your character because there's a lot of things people don't talk about when you're young, you're just trying to make it, you're trying to get that job. And sometimes the, the conditions are not ideal and you know it, but you have to keep, keep pressing on. Where, at, where is Will at this point? When we're introduced to him, he's brand spanking new, working for the company and he's just trying to make it. Who mm -hmm. is he at the core? Cause he seem, doesn't seem like he's a bad guy at all. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a that's an interesting one, and something I kind of wrestled with myself um, when when I was thinking about kind of how to play Billy and how to how to represent him. Um, and I think when you first meet Bill, you know, you see a young, ambitious kid. I think someone who's kind of relatively insecure, keen to prove themselves, keen to gain some kind of status, um, keen to be a success. And I think initially goes into this with, you know, honest intentions, you know, wanting to contribute to society in a positive way, um, quickly realizes along the way, and I think this would probably align with a lot of the experiences that, you know, a lot of Purdue reps had, quickly realizes that he's actually part of a fraudulent campaign. Um, he's part of a company who are knowingly promoting a highly addictive drug as being, you know, non-addictive. And obviously that is, you know, totally unethical but and i think this is also true unfortunately of a lot of people's experiences at the company at that time he kind of became embroiled in the culture of deceit and lies and bribery and he was trapped by the lure of money and the, and the status and the success that he kind of always sort of wanted so um it's interesting to see over the course of the series how he kind of um gets entangled in all that and 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 what decisions he makes um after realizing that that all is not what it seems and maybe he's not part of something so kind of um yeah morally pure as he first thought mm -hmm. uh, and in addition to that what i appreciated about your portrayal it's like you can almost see the agony on your face when you're in the character because you're in a position where you're young and like a lot of people feel powerless kind of like bucking at authority and mm -hmm. trying to, to find their way in that culture and, and still work, but want to make a difference. And, you know, is that a fair assessment of kind of like the conundrum he's having throughout the course of the film or the series? I think so. I mean, I think without being a apologist for anyone who kind of participated in that sort of problematic, you know, culture and, and helped kind of maintain that sort of, poisoned you know uh corporate structure that purdue had where people were you know being paid crazy overinflated bonuses for selling as much of this you know highly uh dangerous drug as they could um and 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 without kind of you know um 
discounting how how problematic that is i think inevitably there are a lot of people who like you say were young were impressionable were also intimidated you know by their by their peers and and their and certainly their superiors into making sales and doing things that ordinarily they might not do um you know historically speaking i mean large bodies of people will follow you know problematic leaders and before they know it they've betrayed their own moral codes so um my character was a composite of you know a, a bunch of different um Purdue representatives and not based on any one kind of single person. Um, and it's important to, to, to make that distinction because I'm not playing a real life character, but certainly Billy represents, I think someone who didn't get out quick enough, you know, and probably, um, well, almost certainly, you know, knew what he was doing um, well after it was kind of too, too late. Mm-hmm. What's fascinating, lastly, what's particularly fascinating is the time period of this of this series is late 90s, early 2000s. Here we are in 2021. It's still a hugely problematic thing happening. How has this changed just your view of the bridge now after and immersing yourself in this role and looking at the world now in the opioid epidemic? Yeah, it certainly increased um, the uh, empathy I have for people who, who struggle with addiction you know, um, and it's made me reflect on, I think, how dangerous and, and harmful a lot of the narratives are surrounding people who do battle addiction, you know, quite often they're the villains in, in, in the story, or they are the problem regarding um, addiction as a general issue. And actually, um, these corporations, these companies, these big farmers um, that we're talking about, like Purdue, are offered too much protection from, from I think, the government and on a political level and i think um it's very clear that um you know the legislation around issues um that are addressed in these shows in this show you know um needs to be uh, addressed and corrected um and it's encouraging to see that the democrats are trying to pass a bill at the moment called the sackler act which um seeks to you know make sure that the settlement that the Sacklers have arranged um, doesn't absolve them of any wrongdoing uh, or all wrongdoing um, and that they can still be held accountable to an extent for, for what they did. Um, I know that um, Purdue are engaging in some compensatory programs um, but I think the the general viewpoint is that that isn't enough and that won't be sufficient. Obviously a lot of the damage is irreparable and um, and like you said you know it's 2021 and um, this drug is still um, having an effect on on communities across the country. Um, it's it's still wildly over over prescribed and um, it's still uh, still damaging to 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 people. Excellent. Marvelous performance. I thank you so much for your time. This is a phenomenal series and I really appreciate speaking with you. Appreciate that, John. Nice to speak to you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks a lot. You too. Thank you, Danny, for your time. I was so moved, riveted, tuned in, locked in. This took me on a whole, spec a whole spectrum of emotions. I've seen the effects firsthand with family members, people in the community. And I'm always intrigued with these type of stories with deciding the span of time. When you have uh, something as problematic as this, there is no real, there's a beginning, but it gets kind of murky in how to cover it. And especially when it's currently still happening. So how did you determine, what? what how did you prioritize how you wanted to lay out the pacing of the story and the aspects that you wanted to cover. Yeah, well, first off, great to meet you. I was thrilled uh, that Black Girl Nerds was going to be here because it's like the coolest site ever. So, oh, you, you know, it's, it's awesome to, to meet you and, and thanks for covering the show. As far as the um, approach to it, um, you know, it really came together for me when I, in my early stages of researching, when I saw that a U.S. attorney had brought a case against them. And I thought, oh, there was a case, which means there was an investigation, which means there were people investigating. And then simultaneously, I read about a DEA agent who was trying to stop them. So I thought, oh, those could be really compelling, exciting storylines that could be used as kind of the spine to take us through this story. Uh, and, 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 and the fact that the story goes over many years, you know, what they uncover, we could then see the damages of, of what they've uncovered on people in the past 
or in people in different time periods. So that was the real breakthrough because I thought, oh, this could be a powerful and even exciting piece of storytelling while also, you know, telling, you know, the tragedy of the opioid crisis and of opioid abuse use disorder, but it could be balanced by what could be a very thrilling investigation that would simultaneously expose the crimes of Purdue Pharma. Mm -hmm. With how personal a lot of the story is, when you're writing something like this and crafting it, how much of your research is academic and how much is it actually touching people? Because some of it is so emotional that can only be gleaned from talking to people to get that type of depth. Yeah, no, uh, uh, totally accurate. And in both, both cases are true. They're both really important, um, you know, is to get all the facts, to get an understanding of the event. And then you have a sort of intellectual understanding of, of different uh, journeys of addiction by reading about them. And then when you start to talk to people and interview them, and I did, you know, 40 interviews, Beth Macy, who wrote the book Dope Sick, was an integral part of the team. She did tons of interviews. Sometimes we did them together. Um, through those interviews, it just kind of explodes the story uh, into an emotional sphere. And that that's where that emotion comes from, uh, is, is from getting that first person experience and what they went through. Mm-hmm. And then it, it fuels you. It fuels you. You know, you're like, I want it. I want to tell your story. I'm so moved by this. And I'm so outraged by what you went through. Why do you think it's taken so long for this crisis to hit the headlines. We see the time period is in late 90s, early 2000s is a time period of the show. But even now, 2021, it's a huge, huge, huge problem still. It's, are we even turning the corner in this country, do you think, on the, the, the depth of this crisis? No, I don't think we're turning the corner at all. It's one of the things that I think uh, I'm hoping maybe the show could do. You know, I know it's really important to Beth Macy is the show, you know, by the end of the show, you haven't gotten there yet, but in the last few episodes, we start to see therapies and treatments and ways people can, can deal and overcome or manage opioid abuse disorder. Um, so, so there are pathways and these pathways are highly stigmatized right now. They're considered controversial by some people. And I would say anyone who's interested in them, you know, needs to go to your doctor. Don't just watch the TV show and think, okay, I'm going to do what these characters did. You should obviously talk to your doctor about it, but I think there are incredibly effective treatments um, that can, that can change lives. Uh, and as far as the first part of what you were talking about, how, how, you know, this has been going on for so long. That is one of the most amazing things to me of the story, because by 2000, OxyContin was famous and not in a good way. You know, there was an active DEA investigation. There were news conferences. Rush Limbaugh had become addicted to it. That made it a huge news story. I think that was in 2001 or 2002. And it was, it was famous by then. And then in 2007, Purdue pled guilty to criminal misbranding. The executives plead guilty to misdemeanors, and it never stopped them. And they just continued to sell and sell and sell. And I think that is the larger story here, which is moneyed influence on government and the revolving door and the swamp, whatever you want to call it. Uh, is, is ultimately how Purdue was able to continue selling for so long, no matter what adversity came their way, uh, they were able to basically spend their way through it. Wow. 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 This is a phenomenal, phenomenal show. Oh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. You. I can't wait to see the rest of the episodes. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Shake your booties for black girl nerds.